Hey everyone, this week I'm gonna be talking about the VP's little publicity stunt, Bob Corker's catfight with Donald Trump, and Donald Trump's glaring hypocrisy when it comes to sexual harassment. And since it's National Coming Out Week, I'm gonna be talking to out actor and activist, Jonathan Del Arco. I'm Dana Goldberg, and you are watching Out in Left Field. Before I get into the insanity of the news, I would like to take a moment and honor the on-screen kiss between Gail Godot and Kate McKinnon. Jesus Christ. If I was Kate McKinnon, I would have intentionally broken character like 147 times. Gail, if you're still a little unsure about your sexual orientation, I volunteer as tribute. Speaking of people who might be gay, Mike Pence left a football game on Sunday because some of the 49ers were peacefully protesting the national anthem. I would bet that's probably the first time the vice president turned around and walked away when another man was kneeling in front of him. I guess he just can't do it when mother's watching. Ugh. We all know this was a huge publicity stunt that actually cost the American taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars. In fact, the president instructed him to do it. This was all set up. Those players had been kneeling each and every week. You think they were just gonna all of a sudden stop protesting the systematic racism that's going on in this country? Come on, you were pandering to the base, Mike. I left the Colts game today because the president and I will not dignify an event that disgraces the soldiers, the flag, or the national anthem. Really? You mean like this? Or I don't know, that one. Or maybe you mean the disrespect kind of like this? After Donald Trump was done playing Mike Pence's other mother, he actually went on a Twitter tirade against Republican Senator Bob Corker. Now, Bob Corker's response was, the White House has turned into an adult daycare center and someone obviously missed their shift this morning, which is magic. However, if you don't do anything before you leave office, Senator, you're basically just that guy in the YouTube comments section talking a lot of shit, hiding behind the safety of his keyboard. Do something. In response, Trump tweeted that Bob Corker gave us the Iran deal, and that's about it. He went on to say, we need health care, we need tax cut reform, we need someone who's gonna do something. I agree, like, I don't know, build a wall, or fight ISIS, or repeal Obamacare. Oh, I'm sorry, you haven't done any of that, Trump. Apparently, Bob Corker's actually accomplished one more thing than you have since you've been elected. Now, a huge story that a lot of people have been following, Harvey Weinstein has been fired from his production company, and with good reason. However, the hypocrisy coming from Donald Trump on this is disgusting. When Ailes got fired from Fox News because he was accused of sexually harassing women, Donald Trump said, he's a good guy, he's a good guy. When O'Reilly at Fox News got accused of sexual harassing women and was fired, Donald Trump said, he's a good guy. But when Harvey Weinstein gets fired because of sexual harassing women, Donald Trump says, yeah, I've known the guy for a while, doesn't surprise me. Let's not forget that this story actually broke a year to the day that Trump's pussy grabbing comments were released to the general public. There is a glaring difference between Trump and Weinstein, and that's public accountability. Some of the Democrats even donated the money Weinstein gave to them back to charity. What does the right do when one of their own is accused of, I don't know, sexual harassing more than 16 women? Oh, that's right, they elect him president of the United States. All right, on a more joyous note, Wednesday was National Coming Out Day. For all of you that are out and proud, please continue to be visible and let your voices be heard. For those of you that have not quite found that time to come out yet, just know there is a community waiting to embrace you so you can live that true, authentic life. And now we're gonna hear what it's like to be out in Hollywood with actor, activist, and just adorable human being, Jonathan Del Arco. Welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for joining us each week. My guest, you may recognize him as Dr. Fernando Morales on Major Crimes for the last 10 years. You've also seen him on Star Trek, The Next Generation, and he is one of the most handsome men in my oh. life. Please welcome to Out in Left Field, Jonathan Del Arco. Oh, you're so sweet. Hi, handsome man. One of the things that we have to get into is this National Coming Out Week. Yesterday was National Coming Out Day. You've been an out actor in Hollywood now for how long? Well, I was never in. Oh. <laughs> but uh, you take that any way you want. But uh, I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> when I first started acting, I wasn't fully like embracing being out. I just didn't really talk about it. Right. I was in my 30s when I when I was like this. This, like, pretending to, like, not be gay and, like, not going to parties really sucks. Right. I wouldn't do, like, hey, best girlfriend, because all my friends are girls, come right. to this party with me and pretend you're my girlfriend. I wouldn't do that, so I would just not go to parties. Oh. It actually hurt my career quite a bit. Really? So you feel like since you've been out, your career's actually gone up? 
A hundred percent. I love hearing that. Yeah. I think there's so many actors that are afraid to come out of the closet it literally because was they the think it's going to destroy their career. Complete opposite effect from that. Did yeah. you feel like you ever got typecast when you came out of the closet? People were trying to put you in roles for gay men, of gay men? Yeah, what was interesting then was I played transgender, which now a gay man wouldn't sort of you be okay so good. to be allowed to play yes. a transgender character. I think that it's a, it's good that we, that we have trans actors that can play the part. So instead right. of a gay actor, et cetera. But I played this amazing character on Nip Tuck. I loved uh, Sophia. And that kind of opened up uh, more of a queer world for me as an actor. Right. And then my friend wrote this role on Major Crimes, which was written for me. I'm gay, and it's obvious from like my first line in, on The Closer. I'm just going to set up the scene yeah, right he, now. Yeah, he came from brunch. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, de a dead old man, and she's like, well, doctor, what'd he die of? And I, I look at her and I'm like, I don't know, maybe he looked in the mirror and thought, why bother? That Which was, was super gay. <laughs> and out. And out. So, but we didn't talk about him being gay until later on right. in the show, but he was always gay. So. so, as a lot of people know, and unfortunately, this is actually going to be the last season of Major yes. Crimes, it got canceled. It and got there's canceled. a lot of fans up in arms about this, I think, yeah. including someone behind the camera. Yeah. It's been an amazing ride, yeah. right? So, I have. No regrets. I'm super grateful I got to do it. Yeah, I had a great time. I would do it for 10 more years. Unfortunately, the demographic that, like me, that enjoy my work and my show are women of a certain age. And somehow, as you well know, it permeates through the culture. Yes. Women of a certain age are va no. as valuable as men. Yeah, well, look, look at our president. Well, maybe they could keep 33% of your episodes. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's a human being watching a show. It's unbelievable. Who cares what gender they are? Was your story coming out to your parents? It ha sort of happened on its own. I, I was dating my first boyfriend. We were moving in together. And my sister had a bad, like, date. One, I don't know, she was coming home at 6 in the morning. I don't know what you call that. Jeez, One that night seems something. like a real, real good date to yeah. me. No, okay. no, she was escaping. A, not a great date. Oh, God. And so she rang, like, my door. And I was with my boyfriend in bed in the one-room one apartment in New York. And so I had to come out to her. And, of course, she went home and told everybody. But no one told me that everyone knew. And right. everyone knew my boyfriend was my roommate. They all adored him, so they were fine with him. We never came out to my, like never said, mom, dad, I'm gay. And then he got sick. And oh. yeah, so he, um, he died of AIDS. And my mother would come over and sleep in bed with him. That's how. Oh my, you are, okay. Yeah. So there was a very deep connection to him vis-a-vis uh, -vis my parents. And a year after that, I moved to LA to kind of refresh, reboot, restart, because I basically gave up acting to take care of him. Yeah. And, um, I was, we were in LA and I'm driving my dad around, he's visiting. So I was like, dad, can we stop for a minute? And we stopped the car and I'm like, I, I need to have a conversation with you. And he's like, what? And I said, um, I'm, I'm gay. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I know you know, but I'm gay. Right. And I'm going to be dating other, other men, you know, now that Eddie's passed. And he goes... Yeah, that's the part your mother and I are really having a hard time with. Aww, yeah, they love him so, so much. Beautiful, right? Because it it's is like, beautiful. Yeah. But I've been married now for 25 years. And so he's dreamy. He's dreamy, and my parents, they're, they're now past. Oh, God, the story keeps getting sadder. <laughs> my parents are dead. The ex lover's <laughs> dead. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. uh, this is why we day drink. Uh, right. Well, who doesn't? Actually. I started adding the cocktails I was having since the election. Oh, God. And I had to cut way back. Yeah, I, I think when a lot of people, when you when you, when you bold face lie to your doctor during your physical by like not a half, but like by a, more than a half, then you have to sort of. They're like, have, how many drinks do you have per week? That was Zero like to three, uh, three it's to like twelve, three to twenty-one, yeah, <laughs> three I a mean, day. Or I'm more curious now about the people that still support him. So I'm asking myself that question just to be like, can we not find ourselves again in this position? Agreed. Please, agreed. Because he will go away like a venereal disease, either kill us or cripple us Jesus or something, Christ. or render us blind. But yeah. he will go away. Okay, He'll great. find a penicillin that will make him go Happiest away. Happiest episode of Out in the Field. No, ever. I mean. <laughs> I know Major Crimes has probably been a nice outlet for you as you've been coping because you get to do this. Sure, because job. murder and death is so yes. exciting. <laughs> but you get to act. Yeah. But now that this is ending, you actually have picked up a new project. Yeah. So what are you going to be doing? I was curious about directing television, and I um, wanted to get into a program. Nice. So uh, I wrote a short that I'm directing. It's about two women. Uh, 
from very, one's a widow, one lives with Asperger's. Somehow they find this common relationship that they have with each other. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's great. And it's funny and a little dark and interesting. I like it just like you. Funny, a little dark, and very interesting. And very interesting. And very handsome. If you'd like to follow Jonathan's career, it's going to continue to bloom and blossom. You can follow him on social media at? Uh, my name, Jonathan Delarco. Done and done? At, yeah, done and done. I love, love you. you. Bye. Mwah. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and this handsome guy. Please join us next week. We have a phenomenal guest. It's a surprise, but a lot of you know him. He's had millions and millions of views on YouTube, and you're going to love him. I'm Dana Goldberg, and you've been watching Out in Left Field. <laughs> Do not disturb in Spanish is no molesta. I volunteer for tribute. As tribute? Yep, that's right. <laughs> that's exactly right, Jesse. Uh, sorry, that whole thing was weird. That cost. I messed up, I know, sorry. It's not even what I wrote. Because neither I or the president will. Mmm, Jesse! <laughs> Bob Corker. Harvey Weinstein story? Do that again. Okay. You wait right there. Uh, no, I don't know if I can say that again. Some of the Democrats. <laughs> Some of the. De I know it, I have to redo it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.